My name is Rodrigo Garcia Lopes. I am from Brazil. I'm a journalist, poet, fiction writer, and a musician too. I'm a composer. Well, it's very difficult to be a writer in Brazil, very difficult to survive by literature. literature. And I think the best thing is uh, being able to, to exchange experiences with, the writer, with other writers and also uh, to be able to, um, to travel around Brazil and meet other people and basically to exchange experiences with uh, other writers and also to, to know that you can have an impact on, on young people especially. The best thing about Brazil, I think, is uh, the cultural the diversity, which is amazing. And the fact that Brazil is a country that is open to multiple influences, and also a country that has a very interesting history, and that is a, a country that privileges the freedom and democracy and free speech, although we had some dictatorship in the 60s and 70s, but now I'm very glad to, to be uh, from some place where we have a woman, a woman president uh, um, and that is, 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 going, is helping a lot uh, the poor people to, to have a better life in Brazil. The best moment is, I think, is when I finish a poem, for instance, and I know that uh, the poem is good enough for me to present, and that I was lucky to have a, 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 a text that satisfies me, and that I know that I probably won't have to revise again. I think that the moment of creation uh, is the is a magic an unexplainable thing that when happens, um, the sort of thing that you you might think is a kind of enlightenment when you write something and you know that that thing is gonna last and that is going to be a part of your story and a part of your life and even after you are dead the words will live and will speak by themselves. I think I was lucky to arrive here exactly in the beginning of autumn, which I love, and to be able to see the color change in front of my eyes, I think that's poetry itself. And I'm still finding about Iowa, but to be in a, in a place like that, at the city of literature, in a place that it has a program, so famous program like the Iowa Writers in the Iowa International Work um, Writers Program. It's really amazing um, to be able to exchange experience with other writers from all over the world. And it's very fascinating because we come from different cultures, but we are basically human beings. And although we have different backgrounds, um, the basic human feelings, they don't change. And that's, and if, more than that, I am, I'm pleased to be here because it's so lovely and the river and the streets, everything is so neat, everything, everybody has been so, so warm with me so far and I'm still kind of amazed with everything that's happening, like as if I were in a dream or in a movie. That's the same, that's the good uh, feeling that I have when I'm some, some place, as if I were living in a dream or living in a, uh, in a, in a movie, for instance. Oh yes, yes. In the last, uh, I always read fiction in my life. I began very early when I was a teenager. I began writing, and as a poet, uh, several friends of mine who write fiction, they they say that they read poetry to 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 get inspiration. And the last years, I, w I I have been reading more fiction because I began to write one. I 
um, six years ago I began writing a detective novel, which was a challenge for me because it's a historical novel that happens in 36 in my hometown, Londrina, in Paraná, in, in Scotland and in England. So I became a detective story addict. I began to, re to read all kinds of detective fiction, the British authors, the American authors, and of course I don't read any, only detective fiction, but I think that fiction feeds me up with uh, inspiration and I think it's a part of my experience to now I'm many poems that I'm writing now because of this experience with with uh, writing with writing a, a detective novel I begin uh, to carry uh, everything that I learned from detective novels into my poetry so I'm kind of my last book has a section only with kind of detective poems which I'm trying to to carry the, the, the detective novel spirits and detective novel kind of logic into poetry. So this has been a new thing for me. I think that's very important uh, for I for the, for the state. It's one of the missions because it's not only about sports and it's not only about uh, entertainment. I think the state has a responsibility towards uh, giving writers some support. In Brazil, it's not very common. Very few opportunities for writers, very few grants, and a lot of debate about that. Many writers think that the state has not obli any obligation to do that, but I am I don't think that. I think that's it's part of public um, uh, public um, obligation, the state obligation to help to create an environment for writers and to finance books by young writers. So I am very much pro any kind of uh, initiative that helps writers to to grow and to create. It's very difficult for many of them to understand in Brazil. Uh, we don't have a philanthropic tradition so strong as we have here in America, and that's a pity because we have so many rich people in Brazil, and they usually they don't support the arts at all. They keep the money for themselves. So we have a lot to learn with the Americans because here we have a very nice tradition of philanthropy and uh, support for the arts that we don't have in Brazil. How difficult is to be a poet in Brazil, especially in times like we are living now, where you have this kind of <clears throat> self-improvement literature dominating. <coughs> you have this entertainment, it's an entertainment business entertainment industry speaking louder than in other areas and uh, where everything is seen from the point of view of consuming consuming and in terms of material things people losing the spiritual dimension of life and worrying about only about having goods and having a good time and uh, having access to what capitalism gives us and more and more people are forgetting the, the spiritual and the poetic dimension of human being. So I think that's uh, it's very hard <clears throat> to be a poet in Brazil. It's hard because um, you have to. It's very ha hard to live by to live by literature in Brazil, and I think it's a kind of a guerrilla uh, type of uh, experience. Like to be a poet in Brazil is already to be a kind of in a marginal situation. Because you are you are working with a language which is is the same language that we use every day, but it's in a, it's language uh, being used to create beauty, to create new experience, to to be like a passport for new experiences and new insights into human life. So I think everybody who writes poetry and more and more people are writing poetry in Brazil now after internet. You, almost everybody. We stayed in Brazil, we have more <clears throat> people writing poetry than people reading poetry.
and which is true. And the only thing that makes me a little bit sad sometimes is that rap poets are writing, it seems that poets are writing more and more for themselves and forgetting the reader and poetry kinds, kind of is becoming a kind of enclosed code or a kind of um, a kind of a sect or a code which makes me very annoyed by because sometimes I am a poet and I don't understand what other poets are writing so I think I I am very worried about being understood by my writer by my readers and being able to communicate uh, with my language and, and not to write just for other poets or just to satisfy the critics, for instance, as many poets do in my country. I began reading poetry, American poetry, very early on. When I was uh, 14 years old, I discovered a guy who was very important for me, who was Ezra Pound. I remember reading ABC of Literature and the Art of Poetry in Portuguese translation when I was 14. And Pound's book gave me lots of insights that I keep until this day. For instance, the importance of translation was something that I learned from Pound. And Pound gave, used to give this advice uh, for a, a, <clears throat> a beginner, a poet beginner. The, the, the translation as a kind of laboratory where you could exercise um, authority, uh, exercise um, different kinds of uh, speeches, different kinds of language. So it was very important for, for me um, the notion of paideuma that uh, 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 Pound developed. And of course, <clears throat> maybe I, I like more Pound's uh, theories about poetry and his translation than uh, his work uh, in Cantus, for instance. But besides Pound, uh, T.S. Eliot, I remember re reading him very early on. He was a very important poet for me. And my major in my academic life was American poetry, 20th century American poetry. And I like uh, my, my, my favorite poets are American. So beginning with Whitman, Emily Dickens' song, which I, both of them, I, which I translated into Portuguese, and then uh, William Carlos Williams, <clears throat> um, and then the beats were very important for me, Allen Ginsberg, Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, all these writers from the Beat Generation uh, influenced me a lot, but I tend not to be rest uh, restricted to, to these influences, but I read a lot of uh, contemporary poets too, and the more contemporary ones, I would mention John Ashbery, very important for me. And the language poets, especially the theory of, on poetry, then the writing itself. And I try to keep up with what's being written in America. And of my master's degree was on William Burroughs fiction. I did my master's degree in Arizona State University on William Burroughs. And then my doctoral degree was on Laura Ryden's poetry. And Laura Ryden is a poet from the 20s and 30s that many people don't, don't know yet. And she's a marginal poet. And it was very hard to, to me to do this because her poetry is very difficult. And when I was here, the first time I was here in the 90s in Arizona, I did a book of interviews with 19 American artists called Voices and Visions, Voices and Visions. And I had the chance to meet some of my, of my icons. For instance, I had I was very ha happy to be able to interview Allen Ginsberg, uh, William Burroughs, John Ashbery, John Cage, Laurie Anderson, Meredith Monk, and many many uh, artists that were my my icons since I was uh, beginning to to do art. So I, I, I think America for me is a constant source of uh, uh, inspiration and is a culture that is always surprising me. Brazil must be very known. Um, Brazilian literature is not very known in the world. Uh, 
and in part because of the language. <clears throat> Paulo Leminski, who is a Brazilian, uh, Brazilian poet, he died in 1989, and I met him, and I got to know him, and he was a, a genius poet. He used to say that to write in Portuguese and to be quiet is more or less the same thing, meaning by that that Portuguese is still pretty much a language of exile or a minority language. Uh, if we have this talk about Brazil being the country for the, the next century country and Brazilian culture is getting to be known more and more over, uh, around the world, the same doesn't happen with literature. We have Paulo Coelho, for instance, which is our most known Brazilian writer and uh, who many writers in Brazil don't consider uh, as being a, a literary uh, literature, what he writes. But uh, we cannot deny that you know some guy who has been translated for so many languages has its value and has to be respected. And besides that, we have people like uh, guys like Machado de Assis, a black writer from the 19th century, who is a genius and who very few people uh, around the world know this guy. I mean, this guy is uh, he's amazing. He's our one of our genius, literary genius in Brazil. And we have Guimarães Rosa, contemporary work. We have Clarice Lispector, uh, a woman a writer, fabulous woman writer in Brazil. We have so many interesting writers in Brazil, but because of the language and because of um, maybe, again, talking about public uh, support, uh, I think we, we need uh, more... Um, government gov governmental eff efforts to make Brazilian literature more known uh, abroad. <clears throat> so it's a pity that Brazil, people talk about so much about Brazil, but at the same time there's so little interest in Brazilian poetry, for instance, in the United States. Very few Brazilian anthologies. Um, the one that Elizabeth Bishop did in the 50s, and the one that recently was made by uh, in, the, in the 90s, but very little effort to make Brazilian literature more known in the United States. And very few people, um, I think more people should be translating Brazilian literature into English because English is the official, I mean, this is the lingua franca. Uh, and and if, you, if you want to be read, you have to have uh, your, your, your work translated into English. And this makes me sad you know, because we have so many writers that I think would be very interesting if they were translated into English and they have so much to tell us about uh, ways of seeing the world, uh, ways of new ways of writing and sensing and experiencing the world. So maybe with all this talk about Brazil, the fact that the Brazil is more on the window, uh, it's more being a focus recently, I think that this might help us also to make our literature more known in the future. Well, one of my favorite American poets is John Ashbery. Um, I, I like also um, um, poets like Andrei Codrescu who lives in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I keep, I keep, uh, poetry has this kind of atemporal dimension too, so for me, um, I pound music to say that uh, poetry is, is timeless, so for me a guy like Whitman is, is contemporary, so poets are, poetry is always contemporary, so for me what Whitman wrote in the 19th century, I could be the time that you are reading him right now, he's speaking to you right now, so he's kind of contemporary. There are many, many American poets that I could mention, and that's one of the things that we try to do in the magazine Coyote that I added in Brazil. We are always trying to publish um, new American poets. I had a chance to translate some contemporary poets uh, uh, lately. Um, like uh, Christopher Muir, who's a uh, director of the program here, and and 
and other poets that I cannot remember right now the names, but I I I always try to keep up with what is being uh, written in America. But the problem is, is that uh, it's too much information, too many people reading, so you have this whole huge universe, this whole sea of writers, and it's sometimes it's very difficult to filter all this information. So sometimes uh, that's why it's, it's good to to talk to other poets, native poets here, because they always have good tips. Oh, you should you should read such and such. You should read that guy. You know, I think you will identify with them. So every week or every month, I'm discovering a new poet, and one of the poets that I I liked very much finding out was besides uh, John Ashbery was Frank O'Hara. It's from the fifties, and Jerome Rothenberg, who is a, a, an anthologist and a poet that I had the chance to meet here in Brazil. Um, Charles Bernstein from the language uh, poet, poetry and I don't know there's so many other poets that I could say but I would say I would stick with these names just to say that I'm still um, uh, living this kind of dream of being here in Iowa because it was a place that I always have heard about and I always dreamed of how it was to be in Iowa. I always heard about the Iowa Writers Program, <clears throat> especially when I was in Arizona, everybody talked about my writers' friends, always mentioned the Iowa Writing Workshop. And um, every time, uh, I mean, every day here is being a, a, an adventure for me. I'm learning every day and learning with talking to other people and especially in this environment where we are, I am right now, where I can talk to a guy from Philippines and a guy from Belarusia and a guy from Argentina and Brazil and a guy from Uruguay. So all this richness, all this cultural environment here is very, very important for me because we tend to, to to restrict our view and I think what the international writing program does is like to open your view and to being able to see that the world is much larger and much richer than you thought before so I think that's the basic um, the basic um, experience that I have right now and I'm very happy to be part of it